Dr. Kaku, you talk a lot about physicists and how physicists are solving the problems in the future. I'm an engineer, and I, I kind of think that we might be a little bit cooler than physicists. If you're at a balance, who's the coolest, an engineer or a physicist? Well, it's like arguing who is cooler, my left hand or my right hand, right? You, you have to have both, and they work in synchronization. However, there are some real whoppers in, in history. We invented the transistor, but we didn't do anything with the transistor. It was left to the engineers who then ran with it to revolutionize modern civilization. The laser. The laser was invented by physicists, but again, it was the engineers who then would commercialize it and, and change the fabric of our life with it. And if you go back, all the inventions of the 20th century, the fantastic inventions, were done by physicists. Take a look at medicine. MRI machines uh, originally came as NR, uh, MMR, NMR machines, nuclear magnetic resonance. Uh, two physicists got the Nobel Prize, in fact, for inventing uh, nuclear magnetic resonance machines, which eventually morphed into MRI machines. Or go back even further, uh, radio, television, um, nuclear medicine, x-rays, all of that originally came from physics. And to go back even farther, the DNA molecule was sequenced yeah. by a physicist, uh, Francis Crick, working with James Watson. So you realize that physicists make the initial breakthrough, but then we stop. We lose interest in it. We don't want to commercialize it. We don't want to like change all of society. We lose interest and we go on to the next frontier. So that's where we uh, physicists and engineers have to work hand in hand because ultimately it has a huge impact on wealth, on jobs, our well-being, and the fabric of, of society itself. Is it ever possible that as a society we create a Terminator movie style world where robots end up attacking and we fight our own creations? Well, it's possible that one day the robots will take over and we're going to be put in zoos and our robot creators will throw peanuts at us and make us dance behind bars, just like we make bears dance behind bars today. But that date is far into the future, at least maybe a hundred years. Our most advanced robots have the intelligence of a cockroach, a, a mentally challenged cockroach, a lobotomized mentally challenged <laughs> cockroach, a stupid mentally challenged, lobotomized <laughs> Right now, our robots are as smart as bugs. But in the coming decades, they'll be as smart as a mouse, a rabbit. Eventually, maybe a dog or a cat. Finally, maybe by the end of the century, maybe even as smart as a monkey. At that point, they may become dangerous. At that point, they may have their own agenda. And we should put a chip in their brain to shut them off if they have murderous thoughts. So there's several ways of handling the Terminator scenario. First is the fail-safe device. A chip in the brain, three laws of, of robotics, yep. whatever it takes. The second is called friendly AI. That is designing robots from the get-go to be helpers and to empathize and to, to, and to help humans rather than to destroy. The problem with that is most funding comes from the Pentagon. <laughs> By far the <laughs> largest funder of artificial intelligence is the Pentagon, which wants robots to kill. Yeah. and not to heal and not to befriend. You've made a lot of predictions. A lot of them are very accurate. It seems like your vision of the future is a little bit too precise. Now, I'm fairly convinced that you're actually from the future. Now, I have a list of Super Bowl uh, contenders for the next couple of years, and I'm wondering if you could pick out... Would that, would that be something you'd be willing to do for me? No. Uh, first of all... I will give you $20 <laughs> right now. No deal? First of all, I haven't followed the football game since I graduated from Harvard many, many decades ago. I was in the Harvard band for quite a while. Went to every single football game. But after that, um, I lost interest. So I'd be totally clueless when it comes to picking uh, who would win on any particular uh, sports game. Right. Now, however, we physicists work with what is testable, measurable, and falsifiable. Things have to be reproducible. So can I disprove that I'm from the future? And the answer is no. Because how do you test it? How do you falsify it? It's really hard to sell kids on math and science. It's really easy to sell kids on cigarettes. Would it help if we made science illegal? There's another way to make science uh, interesting for people. First of all, we are born scientists. When we're born, we wonder what's out there. We begin to wonder about the sun, life, the stars, uh, what makes the oceans, the weather. We're born scientists. And then something happens. When we hit the danger years, 
the danger years of junior high school and high school. That's when it's literally crushed out of us. Those are the worst. Every little flower of curiosity, said Einstein, is crushed by society itself. Because we have to learn all these facts, figures, memorization, we think that memorization is science. And that's not true at all. Uh, my daughter had to take the Regents exam once, and she had to memorize all these facts and figures about minerals, crystals for a geology exam. Nowhere did I see the true driving force of geology, which is continental drift. That's the organizing principle for all of geology. And yet the exam was memorizing all the names of the crystals and the minerals. And then later she comes up to me and says, Daddy, why would anyone want to become a scientist? That was the most humiliating event in my entire life. I felt like taking that book and ripping it apart because that exam was crushing, crushing curiosity right out of the next generation. And then we wonder, hey, how come people are not more interested in science? Duh, okay? You talk a lot about Star Trek, not as much about Star Wars. I'm a big Star Wars fan. What's the difference? Why, why, Star Trek is, why do you feel like Star Trek is such a better series? First of all, I love both. I've seen every single Star Trek and every single Star Wars episode and film. However, there is a difference. In Star Wars, it's like Flash Gordon. It's driven by the plot. The science is sort of secondary. The, the science makes the plot possible. While in Star Trek, the science itself becomes interesting. It causes unintended consequences, social consequences, and they delve into it. There's one episode where they have a city in the sky. Well, they have a city in the sky in Flash Gordon. They have a city in the sky in Star Wars. But in Star Trek, that creates a social problem because the rich and the beautiful are up there and the not so rich and the not so beautiful are down here, the troglodytes. And so we have the social implications of a technology while in Star Wars and in Flash Gordon, it was a means to enhance the plot. So in some sense, Star Trek is about the science. Its plot revolves around the science. This was great. Dr. Yeah. Kaku, thank you so much. Really oh, right. appreciate your time, and mm -hmm. we'll see you in three months in uh, Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. Thank right. you so much.